welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited today because the numbers are growing and it's really nice to know that you guys are enjoying my videos. It gives me more drive to go and share everything that I know that I think makes other people happy too from the food, the travel, the places I go and the activities. Today I have one ingredient little cool thing that you can make at home and I'll have all the links below to all the places you need to buy anything specific. Essentially these are chocolate spheres that are actually are a lot easier than what they look like. And the really cool thing is you can make semi-spheres, put it on a dessert and you can pour hot sauce on it like hot caramel or hot chocolate and it melts. It looks like one of those trendy MasterChef desserts. You can put things in there and put it on a cake and the kids will be like, whoa, when they open it, you can put an engagement ring. I don't know. The ideas are limitless, but I'll show you how easy these are to make. So let's get started. Okay, so the things we'll need will be candy melts or white chocolate or dark chocolate. Today I'm gonna to use Wilton candy melts because they're set a little bit harder and it's just a little bit easier to manipulate. So this is what they look like. Now you have two options with how you want to melt them. You can use a double boiler, which is putting some water in a pot, make sure it doesn't go too high so that it touches the bottom when you put it on top. And you just leave it there because when the water boils, it causes the heat not to escalate and get really hot and then you're melting this slowly. So that's one option. The other thing you can do, which we're going to do today, is simply to use a metal jug and the microwave. And if you go and buy chalk melts, there's actually instructions on how to melt them, but I'll show you. Now to set the chocolate, we have molds. You can have little ones, big ones. I recommend buying the silicon ones instead of the nice hard plastic ones that you see professional chocolatiers use because firstly, they're a lot cheaper and you'll realize that they come out quite easy as well. And lastly, to put the two halves together, you need a non-stick pan. You'll see that on YouTube and other instructors, they say to use something that has a flat edge to slide it off. I don't recommend doing that because by the time you slide the sphere, you're losing so much chocolate. You can just simply pick it up. If you're like super duper duper worried about the texture of the chocolate, or you're one of those people with really hot hands, then wear gloves because you'll be holding the sphere and melting it. So relax, put the aircon on so that you're not hot and do these in a cool environment. Step number one, let's melt it. We're going to do green. Okay, so we're just gonna dunk it's stuck because I started melting it last time. So melting at one minute half power. Whenever you melt chocolate, I'm gonna use this to keep it from touching the core bench. But also, you will think that, oh, nothing is happening. But indeed, it, the, the glass is actually getting quite warm. So you do need to stir, even though you might feel that is purposeless doing this motion right now. Now, I'm going to pop this back in the microwave for 30 seconds. If your spatula is dirty, you can simply have a small plate or you can actually cling wrap the table. So it helps you keep everything under control and clean. You can see the sides are hot. Ooh. You can feel that it's getting sticky. Make sure you scrape the sides because it's the sides are getting hot and you don't want to overheat chocolate. When you burn chocolate, everything in there is gone. So don't burn chocolate. Now the other thing about chocolate is it's hydrophilic, which means it's oil based. It likes things that has oil in it. It does not like water. Once you put a little bit of water in here, it will seize. When it seizes, it means it becomes crumbly and not a smooth texture, which means it goes in the bin. So make sure that everything you use that has to do with, with chocolate is nice and dry. So as you can see, it's actually melted quite nicely. Yeah, 
how thick it is. So quick tip, if your chocolate is grainy and it's not coming out smooth and you can't work with it, you can fix it. There are a lot of products out there and if you watch other YouTube videos, people will tell you like go to a specialty store and buy X, Y and Z. You can simply go to your local supermarket, look next to butter and you'll find shortening. A little blob of shortening will make this whole chocolate quite smooth. I'll show you. I'm going to put a thin slice in there. See, it's like really thick and hard to work with. I'm going to put that in there, give it a stir. So now it's just a little bit thinner. It's just how I want it, okay? So quick tip, I'm putting it on a mitt so that it doesn't get cold as fast. So it's kind of like keeping it warm in a blanket. Reason being, it means it gives you a bigger window of time to play around with it. If it gets cold and hard, pretty easy, put it back in the microwave. But if we can keep it longer at this temperature, it means we can work with our stocking. Okay, another tip, keep your molds in the fridge. Uh, make sure you don't have much moisture in there though, because water ruins chocolate. Um, if, you, if you have it cold, it, it means everything sets a little bit faster, it saves you time. No big deal though. All right, let's do this. If it has a bit of moisture, do wipe it. It's still cold, it's all good. But definitely wipe it. You do not want any moisture. Now put it in there. Use the back of a spoon. The thicker it is, the easier it is to demold later on. I will show you. Pop that in the fridge for 10 minutes and leave it on the bench top for another five or ten until it fully sets. It's fully set when you touch it in the middle and it's super hard like a chocolate bar. Won't take long. All these because I want to make that. So leave that to set. I'm gonna do the medium size. Again I'll show you how useful this spoon is. I love it. Club. Club. Next tip, if you have quite a bit of chocolate left over because you overestimated, spread this on a piece of baking paper, leave it there, and by the time you finish all your cooking, it will be set hard. You can then crumble it and put in a Ziploc bag and you can reuse it. What you wanna do is loosen it gently. See? Ta-da, ta-da. And then push it. You can turn it upside down and push it on baking paper if you're scared, so peel it like a sticker. And then this is the bit that is less likely to break, the middle. So hot push it here, don't push the edges, that's where it's most likely to break. So hold it by the middle, push. Hold it, push it from the middle, push. And you're bound to break a few, which is just fine. If you look at this, if you hold it here, you're obviously more likely to crush it. So the strongest part of this semisphere, half a circle, is here. So when you're demolding, push from there. Don't try to peel these edges or hold these edges. That's how you break them. Oh, look how shiny it is. So try to keep it on your hand like this and put it on baking paper. My hands are hot, so it'll melt it. Boop, another one. Ready? Doesn't matter these bits. Just flick it So. Hold it down. So I'm cupping my hand. They will fly off across the kitchen if you're not careful. This this part of my hand is going to catch it, see? And then just push it down, pull it off. Ta-da! So notice how this is like so big, so we can melt this for ages and it'll be fine. So put them in there. And when you see that, you know, it's like flat because all the wrinkles have been melted, you can pick it up and put it together. Concentrate. Once you're happy it's aligned, run your finger. And I suggest do one finger, swap, your second finger, swap, and your third finger. Don't overdo it because you'll be actually, um, what's it called? You will cause cracks like this. See, see, I over touched it, touched it twice. Now there's a crack refilled. Ta da, that's it. 
That's it, really quick. And just watch the sides. I can pull. And then join it with the other one. Make sure it's flush. Run your fingers across. Look, we made a rattle. After making all these wonderful balls, we gotta figure out a way to uh, put them together. So one of the things you can do is get rose spirit and with a paintbrush and edible silver, pearl, dust, or any color you want, you can brush on the ball. So now I've made silver one. See, look how cool they look. When it comes to art, it's a good idea to start with the bigger pieces because that gives you the idea where things go and then finish off with the small ones. Even when I'm face painting, I'm doing always the same thing. Always start with a big idea, then I'm filling the gas with a small one to give it balance. So I have the name here, Happy Birthday. I'm going to use this uh, bit of melted chocolate or candy melts that I've reserved, and I'm putting it on a hot pan with a paper towel so it doesn't burn, but it keeps it from the tip going hard. So that's my glue ready. I'm gonna try my best not to touch it. See, that's ugly. I'm gonna put the glue I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna put some glue here, which is chocolate, it's not really glue. I'm even gonna put it next to the sign, so the sign is not gonna move. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Glue the bottom. Structure-wise, we need to make sure that our decorations are not gonna go on that side. So we're gonna balance by gluing something on the other side and putting some white on that side. And somewhere on the bottom. much for watching I hope you enjoyed making the balls with me and that you'll give it a go too and as usual if you do have a go don't forget I would love to hear from you so either comment down below or send me a message on my Instagram that's where I go online and check regularly on other notes if you enjoyed these video today there are also other videos about cakes that I've posted and there will be more that I will post I will also be posting videos that are for beginners for those who have never baked before so you get the real basics from how to bake a cake to cakes that look like the one we did today so I hope you enjoyed that and don't forget if you want to follow me and my more of my adventures from traveling to food eating and other desserts and other recipes for everyday life as a parent please don't forget to subscribe like and turn on notification thank you so much for watching and